I won my very first gold medal at the age of 17 on the 200 meter sprints and I was now the new Dutch champion in the Netherlands for going after Joel's goals. <laughs> yeah. And now I can brag the neighborhood myself too, of course. My coach, Sami Mons, was a very important person for me. In life, you need somebody to push you. You need people around you who support you, who believe in you, and this man did. I remember that he was giving the directions. And I asked him, what do I need to do to be the best on and out of the field, and told me about discipline, how important that was. But he also told me about theory. The theory of the rabbit. And you wonder, what is that? It's a theory that has been part of my life. He described me as a rabbit in a cage, ready to escape away from lions. He wanted me to become that rabbit. Who are the lions? The lions are people that envy us sometimes, our haters, disappointments, dilemmas, stress, and in my case also, the Dutch immigration office. <laughs> He said, of course, you are not a rabbit yet. As a kid, as a teenager, you are stretching the limit. You're thinking about it every three, three months. They write you a letter that you have to leave the country, leave your mother, and that's what you think about. When you are in the blocks as a sprinter, your focus is not there. You are getting eaten by these lions. I want to become that rabbit so bad. So I left the Netherlands for the stripes and stars. And I went to the U.S. August 15, 2008 on a scholarship in Utah. Can you imagine kid from Ghana, Netherlands, Utah. I'm super grateful for that, where I could deal with my frustrations from the Netherlands. Because again, sports was like a coping mechanism for me. In 2012, I got very close. I got a call from the Netherlands to compete for them at the London Olympic Games, the 4 by 100 meters. Of course, I wanted that. I was excited. My dreams were going to become a reality in 2012. But something terrible happened. Something really terrible happened. As I was getting ready to compete and I was already to get qualified, I was part of the Dutch pre-Olympic team, I got a really terrible injury, a tendon injury. One that's really hard to heal if you have tendon injuries on your Achilles or anywhere else in your body. It's really hard to heal because you need blood flow. So there goes my dream in 2012. I was not going to the Olympic Games in London. I was devastated because I've left the Netherlands to the US. I've left my family behind, my loved ones, friends, everything that I knew, my comfort zone I left behind to go after my dreams. So when I missed the Olympics in 2012, I was asked to do box that like, yes, a blind guy that goes into a thing that pushed that thing very fast downhill, about 80, 90 miles per hour, and I said, they are crazy. <laughs> and then of course I thought about the 1993 movie of Cool Runners, I said, they can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so I was then what you call the brakeman. I was the guy in the back, there you see me, in the competition in Utah. And I'm the guy who pushed the sled really fast because of my speed as a sprinter, that's why I was recruited. People always ask me, why are you doing this bobsled? It's because of my speed, I had to push the sled very fast. The first 50 meters I have to jump in, and at the end I have to break. I don't see anything, I go like that. Okay, I don't see anything, at the end I have to break. Luckily, I was good enough to break so nobody died. Okay? So in 2013, I was part of the Dutch team. We did really well. In 2014, I got very close. I was going to make my dream become a reality at the Olympic Games in Sochi in Russia in Russia, in 2014. We had two sleds from the Netherlands, but only one sled qualified. I was part of the B team, so I became a second alternate. I had to be, I sit home until somebody got injured to get, to fly into uh, Russia. But nobody got injured. Luckily, I didn't know anybody to get injured. But maybe if I thought more about it, I should have used my African voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's a joke. So that was my dream for the second time. This time, my shoulders were down. I was looking down instead of looking up. My shoulders could not come up anymore. I was again devastated for investing so much time and effort into a dream that I've been having since I was 17 years old. And I didn't know what to do anymore. I needed a job because I spent all my money in traveling around the world to become an Olympian. Because first you have to be the Olympic team before the Olympic team supports you. You have to support yourself, that's how it goes most of the time. So I was looking for a job, I wanted to get married. I wanted to pay my cell phone bill. I wanted to pay for the housing that I was staying in. I had only about 700 euros in my account. 
So I left during traveling with the, with the European team with the Dutchman, left back to Utah to find a job. I graduated in marketing with a minor in business management, but you know how that goes if you're looking for a job, a second interview, a third interview, maybe a sixth interview, it takes forever before you get a job. So I saw the customers, I saw an ad on KSL from Utah, and it says customer service. You can earn about $900 every two weeks. I said, that's good money enough to pay for some stuff. I'll do that and later on I'll find a real job. Well, I didn't know what it was until I found out later on it was what? Selling vacuums. <laughs> yes. You've seen this before. I know people from the United States of America, you know Kirby. Yeah, we all do. Now I know you guys knock on your doors. You don't want to open up. I was one of those. I was selling Kirby vacuum door to door. In the morning, very early, 8 a.m. all the way to 12 to 1 a.m. sometimes. It was a really tough job. My first month, I sold 19 Kirby's in 15 days. You may say 19 back, that's not a lot. Well, the Kirby's are about what? Depending how much you sell it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 somewhere, that's very expensive stuff. In my second month, a very cold month in February, I sold 32 Kirby's in 18 days, and I was awarded the Gold Digger Award. <laughs> It has nothing to do with Kanye West. Okay, to his songs. That guy's a little bit crazy sometimes. But if you can sell 30 vacuums in 30 days, you become like a king in America. I was the number one in the United States uh, selling vacuums door to door. Yes, that was me. It went so well that sometimes it takes about four or five years before you have your own distributorship. It took me four or five months. I had 20 guys working for me. In my, in my very first month as a successful business guy, a guy who was illegal in the Netherlands came to the net, came illegal in the Netherlands, came from Ghana, and I had my own business, an entrepreneur. We had almost a million dollars in sales selling vacuums. Wow. Okay. In July 2015, so we moved from Salt Lake City to Arizona with my business, with my wife. I got married in 2014. And in July 2015, my wife looked at me, we were in the family room, and she said, Kwasi, what's going on? She saw there was something bothering me. And she asked, as a lovely wife, and I explained to her that besides being married to her, make sure you tell her that first, <laughs> I have one big dream. And my biggest dream is to go to Olympic Games like a bucket list thing I have to and I must go. It is my biggest dream. My biggest dream is not to sell vacuums. I want to go to the Olympic Games. It was a way for me to get there. She said one thing, and that's really simple. And she said, Akwasi, I don't want you to be 99 years old and still be whining about your Olympic dreams. <laughs> Let's go for it. We left our beautiful home in Arizona, had like six cars with our company vehicles and everything. We were successful. I was gonna, I was, you know, I was winning gold medal and selling vacuums. But we left back to Utah in a U-Haul 13 hours drive, and I picked up a sport called Skeleton. Yeah. This guy likes challenge. And when I went to Utah, um, and Skeleton came all about again because the same coach who recruited me in Bob Sutton told me that, again, this is more an individual sport, like 100 meters, 200 meters. I have my own, I have control my, for my own life, and I can really push the sled really fast. So I, you still have to learn how to slide, though, she said. That takes like four or five years. So I started my own, I was selling back and then still myself to be able to sponsor my own Olympic dream because I believe so much in myself. Because who was going to support a guy from Africa that's trying to do a snow sport that has mixed the Olympic Games twice. So I had to believe in myself and go after my own dreams and work hard for it. Luckily enough, I found doTERRA. I was already using the oils before I even talked to doTERRA because my family, my wife, they use the product a lot. And I was looking for a company who support me to help me go after my dreams. And doTERRA helped me get there. Not only did they guide me through different steps, how to use the product to be successful as an athlete, but they guided me through, they trust me, it's like a career life, a career lifeline. And they supported me to do really well. They support me so much that in February 2018, after 15 years, struggling, working hard, failing and getting up, after two injuries, after missing the Olympic Games twice, there I was in Pyeongchang, South Korea, the flag of my country. To be able to be that little kid from Ghana, to be able to wave the flag of my country very high was a very special moment for me. A flag that a lot of people have fought for and died for, is that I, a 
Kwasi Primko had the opportunity and privilege to walk in the arena as the first Gelfin athlete ever from Ghana out of 29 million people, as the second Winter Olympian ever from my country, as the first black male Gelfin athlete ever from the history of the Winter Olympics, as the first from West Africa, there I was competing and fulfilling my dreams. So with the help of doTERRA, I was able to fulfill my Olympic dream um, as an athlete to keep myself healthy as well and go head first.